Welcome back to Investor Intel. As we tape this, the mining show is one week away. One of the hot topics will be the rare earths, and that brings us to Peak Resources. And with us is Rocky Smith from Peak. Hi, Rocky. How are you doing? We're doing very well. The rare earths are an interesting market right now, given the electric vehicle movement. Which rare earths does Peak Resources mine? Well, we mine all of the rare earths. But the primary rares in our operation are going to be NDPR, the neodymium, praseodymium. Uh, they represent about 23% of our uh, total rare earth uh, composition. What are the other ones? Well, in most, like most uh, rare earth uh, operations, you get uh, you get about everything. Everything comes. There's 15 rare earth elements. And uh, yeah, the primaries are always cerium and lanthanum, but but uh, you always get all, get all of them. In our case, the mids and heavies only represent about one percent of the total, okay. so they're really not that not worth that much to talk about. And cerium isn't actually a rare earth. It's a rare earth, but it's not that rare. It's about as plentiful as copper. Yes, well, rare earths aren't really all that rare the, in the in the crust of the earth, but uh, harder to find them in concentrations that you can actually recover them from. Uh, the economics of mining. Now, yeah. you have two projects underway right now? Uh, we have uh, uh, an operation in Tanzania that, that where the resource is, and we're looking at uh, starting that up and putting in a uh, concentrator in Tanzania, and then taking the concentrator and moving it to Teesside in the UK and putting a refinery in there will basically crack the concentrate and then separate the impurities and then separate the rare earths from each other. So to my ear, it sounds expensive to ship concentrate that far away. Why wouldn't you just build on site? Well, the cost of uh, shipping uh, the reagents to the site would be about five times what the cost to ship the concentrate to the reagents. So in this case, the availability of a, of a chloralkali uh, production, and uh, we, we actually do it as a byproduct acid uh, uh, a source. So that is not available in Tanzania. So if you were to try to process everything in Tanzania, then you'd have to ship five tons of reagents to Tanzania for every ton of concentrate that you would have shipped to the U.S. Okay, if you'd have done it in the other direction. Yeah, that's not very economic. And speaking of economic, you put out a project update in October of 2017 with some very impressive numbers. I saw a pre-tax NPV of 914 million U.S. dollars. Yes, when we got done with the bankable, uh, we started really taking a hard look at the numbers, and we we noticed. Uh, that we had some high reagent costs, particularly in the flotation areas in Tanzania. So we went back and screened that particular area more diligently. And we found that uh, there were some opportunities there. So we, we uh, looked at uh, different reagents were le that were less expensive, which was good. Uh, but we also found that the, uh, the reagents that we were using using actually performed so much better than the one that we had in our BFS that we were able to bring more material through the same size plant and uh, the effect of which was we got about a 15 percent increase in capacity through the plant which of course affected the uh, the economics. When do you think that plant will be constructed and operational? Well all of the construction is uh, really pending the uh, permits coming through in Tanzania, the mining permit coming through in Tanzania, uh, and, and the re financial raise. So whenever those happen, at that point we'll start. It will take us about 15 to 18 months to build both these plants. Um, it's a little bit difficult for me to see or say exactly when these other two things are going to happen. Uh, we're making some progress with the Tanzania. Uh, it's been since July of last year when they changed the mining law. Everybody sort of stopped their process, but Tanzania is getting ready to uh, start uh, working the backlog of right. 
uh, mining licenses. And when we get that from the uh, mining minister, the deputy mining minister and the uh, my, uh, commissioner of mining, everybody's saying pretty much the same thing, that they've got to set this commission. And once that's happened, they'll start working through this uh, long list of uh, mine uh, okay. projects that are there. So I've done work in South Africa where they have the black empowerment programs. Is there a similar program in Tanzania? Well, I don't know about the black empowerment program exactly, but in Tanzania they do expect a high percentage of employment for the Tanzanian uh, people, and they expect us to source as much as we can from uh, the country of Tanzania, uh, which I think uh, makes a lot of sense to me that that they would uh, do, get try to get as much value out of uh, operations like this as they can. Right. Um, you know, we're we're bound to uh, have uh, a good partnership with Tanzania, and we've got to do what we can to uh, ensure that they see us as a as a partner. Uh, that we're transparent to them so they understand that we're not, uh, you know, trying to uh, do anything underhanded. Right. At the same time, we've got a responsibility to our sh to our shareholders to make sure that the value of the project carries through for them as well. Good mining companies understand the value of CSR, and it looks like you've uh, understood that. You're putting that into action. Yes, I believe we are. Good. All right. Well, next week is the mining show. If you uh, manage to make it up from Perth to Toronto, I'd be happy to buy you a beverage. What's the next major milestone we should expect after the mining show from Peak Resources? Well, we're going to be in Tanzania in uh, the all of March, and then in early April, we're going to sit down with the Tanzanians and do a workshop with the the main uh, people in the uh, that are going to be making these decisions and start the analysis on the uh, on the mine license. Aside from that, uh, we should by in a little while get our uh, environmental permit for the UK. Right. It's been out about two and a half months and we expect to see it in about a month. So that'll be a milestone for us. And uh, uh, beyond that, uh, it's just a matter of uh, sitting down, finding a strategic partner uh, possibly doing some offtake agreements. We have been a little bit hesitant to do offtake agreements because the price has been so low. But as the price comes up, we're starting to look more aggressively towards doing offtake agreements and uh, getting a getting a basis for our financials. Rocky, thanks for your time. That's Peak Resources Trading is P-E-K on the ASX. We'll check in with you in a couple of months. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.